All right, this video is on absolute value and simplifying expressions with absolute value. Um, I tell my in-person classes this a lot, but most of the time things in math look much more complicated than they are. So things look like they're really hard and maybe they are, but usually it's not quite as bad as it looks. Absolute value is something that actually looks easy and seems like it is and ends up being a little more complicated than it is at first glance. And so the three problems I've got on the screen are the three types of problems where absolute value is actually easy. And so we know from way back that the absolute value of four is four, the absolute value of negative six is six, and the absolute value of zero is zero. So I'll assume you know that part. Um, the thing I wanna talk about is what is the absolute value of x? And what's the absolute value of negative x? And at first glance, it seems like this would be x and this would be x. But that's actually wrong, or it can be wrong. And we want to talk about why that is. Okay, so let's talk about the absolute value of x on the left first. So let's say that x is 4. Okay, so is the absolute value of x equal to x in that case? Well, if it is, then we're saying the absolute value of x, absolute value of 4 is equal to 4, which is true. So then, yes, that's true when x is 4. What if x is negative 2? Is the absolute value of x equal to x? Well, if it were, that's saying the absolute value of negative 2 is equal to negative 2. That's not true because obviously the absolute value of negative 2 is equal to 2. And so the absolute value of x is not always equal to x. It is equal to x if x is positive or 0, but it's not equal to x if x is negative. Same argument could be made for the one on the right. So if we look at x equals 4 again, then that's saying the absolute value of negative x is equal to x, so is that true? That would be saying the absolute value of negative 4 is equal to 4. So yes, that's true in that case. But if x is negative 2, then that's saying the absolute value of negative, negative 2 is equal to negative 2. That's not true because the absolute value of that would be positive 2. Okay, so what fixes this in both cases is that there's two different ways to simplify the absolute value of x, and it depends on the value of x. So the absolute value of x is equal to x if x is greater than or equal to 0. The absolute value of negative x is equal to x if x is greater than or equal to 0. So that it depends on what whether the answer is positive or negative as to whether x is right, the right answer. And so if x is positive, then it's correct to put x as the absolute value in both cases. If x is negative, the absolute value is actually the opposite of x. And so in both cases, that simplifies to negative 1 times x if x is negative. And so we can check that statement by looking here. The absolute value of negative 2 is that negative, negative 2. Yes, because negative, negative 2 is actually positive 2. And so we use the, the expression on the left, or this equation on the left, a lot. Um, and in general, in algebra classes, you don't spend a lot of time simplifying absolute value because when x is in there, you really can't. So if I write the absolute value of x minus 5, you have to figure out other ways to deal with that because we don't know whether x minus 5 is positive or negative. When we start talking about sequences, though, we're usually talking about the sequence as n goes to infinity. So in general, we don't know whether n minus 5 is positive or negative. If n is less than 5, it's negative. If n is greater than 5, it's positive. But normally what we're concerned with is the limit as n goes to infinity. So as n goes to infinity, for large n, n minus 5 is positive. So we will make statements consistently that this is the case 
and we will be implying for large n. And we use that statement meaning that n needs to be large enough for us to be correct. In this case, n would need to be greater than or equal to 5 for that to be true. Okay, so let's look now at the absolute value of 7 minus n. So think about large values of n. For large values of n, 7 minus n is negative because for large values of n, n is going to be bigger than 7. That means that we simplify using the second expression. It's negative 1 times whatever's inside the absolute value. So the absolute value of 7 minus n is negative 1 times 7 minus n. Well, that simplifies to negative 7 plus n, which is n minus 7. Again, the implication is this is true for large n. How large, we don't necessarily need to specify, but in this case, n would need to be at least 7. The reason we use this phrase for large n is because normally we don't want to be bothered with determining when this is first true. So if I have n squared minus 25n plus 2, and I want to talk about the absolute value of that, I want to think about large values of n. So for large values of n, n squared is much larger than 25n, and it's much larger than 2, which means for large n, this expression is positive. That means the absolute value of what's inside is itself, as long as n is big enough for n squared to be bigger than the negative parts of that problem. Okay, if I look at 3n minus n to the fifth plus 672n to the fourth, try to simplify that and check it with me in just a minute. Okay, for large values of n, n to the fifth outpaces the others. That means that this inside of the absolute value, that expression is negative. So the absolute value is the opposite of this for large n. It won't be bigger than that for a lot, or I'm sorry, it won't be this for a lot of values of n, but once n is big enough that n to the fifth is taking over, that's the dominant term, then the absolute value would equal this. That simplifies to positive n to the fifth minus 672 n to the fourth uh, minus 3 n. And again, we don't know necessarily. We could determine it, but we're not going to specify when that starts being true. But once n is large enough, the absolute value of that expression is the opposite of what's inside. I want to talk about this expression. So if I have negative 1 to the n, that is always positive 1 for any even value of n. It's always negative 1 for any odd value of n. So then the absolute value of that is always 1. Okay, so the absolute value of negative 1 to the n is always 1. When we talk about doing absolute value, we can split multiplication and division, but not addition and subtraction. So if I have a problem like this, where I'm taking negative 1 to the n times negative 7n over 6n squared minus 5n. If I want to take the absolute value of that, I can deal with the top and bottom separately, and I can deal with the two parts multiplied separately. The absolute value of negative 1 to the n is 1. The absolute value of negative 7n, that's negative for large n, so it's negative negative 7, which of course simplifies. The bottom for large n is positive, and so the absolute value is 6n squared minus 5n. All of this is for large n, once n is large enough for everything there to be the way we're saying. That then equals 7n over 6n squared minus 5n. We'll use things like that quite a bit when we're talking about sequence convergence, so it's useful to understand how to simplify absolute value. 
we, we assume large n when we're talking about limits as n goes to infinity, and so it's definitely worth saying that that's the case. This, these absolute value problems would not always simplify this way, but they would for large values of n. All right, that's the quick review for absolute value. Uh, feel free to email if you have questions. Thanks for watching.